Hey everyone, welcome to another How to Webflow. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create an expanding and collapsing search bar that you can place at the top of all of your pages inside of your next Webflow project. All right, ready to learn? Here we go. <laughs> All right, here we go. So I'm going to put the trigger search icon inside of the nav bar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in a link block here with the nav items. And I'm going to drag in a magnifying glass icon that I got from flaticon.com. And that's it for this part. Yeah, I just need a trigger, something to click on. And yeah, so that's done. So next, let's add our search. So I'm going to drag the search right above the nav. Okay, and we should have this full bar right here. All right, for this search, I'm going to give it an overflow of hidden. All right, and the reason why is because with my interaction, which I'll get to later, I'm going to start the height at zero. So when it's zero, it looks like it's gone. But when I click on the magnifying glass, it'll open like this. See how it reveals itself? That's what overflow hidden does. It uh, it masks out anything that goes beyond its board, um, boundaries. All right. So for now, we're going to keep that height auto. And let's go ahead and style this very nicely. So. This is just for styling points. I'm just making this div block um, a max width of 500, setting it to flex, and centering that whole thing. Okay, so uh, flex because I want the button and the search um, input to be on the same row. And this uh, center right here is centers the, the search block and the button uh, on the center of the page. Right now, right here, you notice there's like 10 pixels of margin. That's because Webflow adds that on its own. So as you can see, it's right here, but it's in gray. So let's go ahead and remove that by pressing on the number and putting in zero. Cool. Now this one right here, this has some padding, but we can't see the number. So just mess around with the number and there we go. Fixed. All right. Uh, for this, let's uh, put some margin. We don't want it to hit the top. We don't want it to hit the very top. And lastly, this search right here, let's give it a background color. Um, we'll just, since this is just, since this is just for, for practice, I'm just going to make it gray. <coughs> <coughs> All right. And so that's done. Now all we have to do is add the interaction trigger. All right, so let's do this. I'm going to go into this symbol, go to the link block, and let's give this a class name of search trigger. And now I'm going to go to my interactions, add an element trigger, and we're going to choose tap. So we're going to create an animation and we're gonna call the new one open search. Now this is going to uh, expand the search. So I'm gonna click on this. Oops, let me go back. All right, right there. Go back there. And so this is what happens. If you try, if you're inside of a symbol and you try to target another element, you leave the symbol and the interactions panel will go away. So what you need to do is click on anything else inside of the navigation or the symbol and just add whatever, um, whatever thing you're going to edit. So I'm going to edit the size and now I'm going to right click, change target, and then click on search. There we go. So I didn't have to leave the, the symbol, okay? So this search, when the page first loads, which is set as initial state, when the face, page, bleh, face, when the page first loads, I'm gonna set it to zero, all right? But when I click on it, when I click on the, um, 
on the search trigger, okay, I'm going to set the height to auto, right? And make sure that change target, search to, and there we go. So it's going to look like this. Well, it's not going to be that slow, but yeah. And let's add some easing to it. I'm going to go out quint, and that's our open. Now let's do our close. I'm going to start animation for the second click and duplicate my open search and call this one close search. And now I can just delete this. The I can delete the one that's auto. I can delete the one that has a height of auto. And this one right here, initial state, I'm just going to set this as not initial state. All right, so this one collapses it back down to zero. So if I toggle preview, there we go. And that overlay that you saw, that's from my older um, tutorial on how to do page transitions. So let me just delete this real quick. Delete. There we go. All right. Here we go. Oh, I need to add a easing to that one. So let me go back here to my search trigger, go to close. And right here, I'm missing the easing. Linear should be out. Yeah, ease out. And there we go. Hope this helps. All right, that's it for this video tutorial. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Or if you have a suggestion for a future tutorial, let me know that as well. Uh, if you want to support me, go ahead and click on the subscribe button, the like, and the notification bell. If you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at the Pixel Geek. That's it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, make the web beautiful together. See ya.